most. P-O-S-T, P-O-S-T, the cereals you like the most. The cereals made by Post take you to the secret mountain retreat of Captain Video, Master of Space, Hero of Science, Captain of the Video Rangers. Operating from his secret mountain headquarters on the planet Earth, Captain Video rallies men of goodwill and leads them against the forces of evil everywhere. As he rockets from planet to planet, let us follow the champion of justice, truth, and freedom throughout the universe. Stand by for Captain Video and his Video Rangers. Brought to you today by Post Sugar Crisp, the great new cereal you can eat three ways. As a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. Excitement rides high and tension mounts steadily as the moment fast approaches when Captain Video and the Ranger must turn the spaceship galaxy toward Comet X and try to stop that flaming monster from smashing the man-made satellites of Pluto. But unknown to Captain Video, the cowardly and hate-filled Lieutenant Fraser secretly pulled that switch while he was installing a repaired gravitational gyro. Just what will happen aboard the galaxy, we don't know, Rangers, since Captain Video doesn't know that he pulled the switch. Now on the power deck of the galaxy. Fine job on the gyroscope, Fraser. Nice to hear that he's good for something, sir. That isn't all you're going to hear about me. All right, Costo, if both of you, this is no time for personal animosities and things like that. It's time both of you were back aboard the Excalibur. So why don't you let us help you? Not Fraser, of course, but I mean the others, like Tubbs and McGovern and Cromwell. We'd all be more than willing, sir. Oh, no, thanks, Bascom. I think two men can complete this job. There's no sense in risking the lives of the others. Keep using that word risk, sir. It's a little more than a risk to blow up a comet. I'd say that we're sure death. No, we're not sure, Bascom. You see, we don't know what'll happen when we blow up the nucleus of a comet by bombarding it with atom blasts. Excuse me, sir. But I'm sure that you know as well as I do that you're practically certain to succeed. After all, the nucleus of, of a comet is made up of meteoric masses. No, yeah, we're wasting. Time, Take your prisoner back aboard the Excalibur. Tell Tubbs that I'll contact him inside the next quarter hour. Very good, sir. Come on, Fraser. Frazier. Yeah? That talk we had while we were working in here together, I, uh, I hope you keep it in mind. See you at the court-martial, if you get through. Come on, space boy, let's go. Meanwhile, aboard the Excalibur, anchored in space not far from the galaxy, certain developments are taking place, which, again, unknown to Captain Video and the Ranger, will have far-reaching effects. You can only shoot one of us at a time, Tubbs. You can't kill us with a nuclear matic, of course. You can only stump us, or rather one of us, temporarily. Mr. McGovern is ready, and I am ready. Now, which one is it going to be, Tubbs? Which one? I don't know what you're up to, but you'll never get away with it. We'll be the ones to decide that, Tubbs. Thank you, Tubbs. Damn you, Lieutenant Cromwell! Now, that's no way to be talking to a Lieutenant Ensign Tubbs. It is myself will be after putting you on report. And you'll put me on report. They'll court-martial you for this. Oh, I don't think so, Tubbs. Do you think so, McGovern? Sure, and I don't see how they could, lad. Considering we'll not be there to be court-martialed. So that's it. You don't intend to return to planet Earth. Tubbs, I would say you are downright psychic. How you know that neither McGovern nor I will ever return to planet Earth, I can't say, but you're right, Tubbs. Someone's coming, man. It's Captain Video. Well, let's hope not. But it is. This is not the captain, I'm glad to say. What's going on here? Oh, come, come, Bastard. You can see beyond your nose. Sure, you can, sir. It's as plain as the nose on your face. We've taken the gun away from Mr. Tubbs. Ah, so it's mutiny, then. Mutiny aboard my own ship? You know what I'm talking about, Cromwell. You and McGovern are both under arrest. We're under arrest, Bascom. Drop that nuclear matic before I drop you. Take that nuclear matic from him, McGovern. You shouldn't talk about such things, Bascom. You should act as I did. Oh, you dirty. Please, Bascom. At least have the grace to appreciate the fact that I didn't knock you out. 
I only used half power. You know why you're fathered, I don't know. Now, come on, Cromwell, let's get rid of these two quick, and then we can Heart, start off... no! If it isn't Mr. Fraser running off at the mouth again. What are you talking about? You're in command here now. Well, that is, we're in command. I'm afraid you're riding the wrong orbit, Fraser. You better throw on your braking rockets and pause long enough to listen to what I have to say. Oh, save the talk for later. I'm sorry, Fraser. For me and McGovern, there is no later. There's only now. I don't follow you. I know you don't. You misinterpret my motives just as Tubbs and Baskin did. I haven't taken over here to escape Captain Video. I've taken over to save him. Save him? Yes, from death, Tubbs. Fraser, you'll find this hard to believe. But McGovern and I feel it's the only way to pay back what we owe. Are you crazy? No, Fraser. I'm sane. For the first time in a long while. For a long, long time, I've been living a lie, Fraser. It began the day I let you blackmail me into admitting you into the Corps of Courage. I finished living it some hours ago. I don't get you, Lieutenant. It's simple enough, Baskin. McGovern and I, well, I, at any rate, am guilty of a crime against the universe. I can repay the universe by exchanging my life for that of a man whose life means more than any other in this century. The life of Captain Video. And seeing that I'm as guilty as Mr. Cromwell, I'm uh, very happy to go along with it. You mean that you two, you're going to blow up Connor X. Blow it up before Captain Video has a chance to get anywhere near it. Holy Hyperion hot and top. Well, what about us? What about me? You haven't any right to sacrifice our lives. I have no intention of doing that. You're going back to planet Earth to face a court-martial. Tubbs and Bascom will escort you aboard the Excalibur's jeep. Well, we'll never make it back to planet Earth on a jeep. There isn't enough fuel. No, but you can reach Pluto. There's more than enough for that. Now listen, Cromwell. Look, we'll waste no more time in talk. We haven't got it to waste. Not if McGovern and I are going to reach Comet X before Captain Video. Tubbs, Bascom, prepare the jeep for instant blast off. Well, Rangers, I'm not so sure Cromwell knows what he's doing. Ah, but here's an old friend of ours who really knows what he's doing, the man with the star on his chest. Bronco Billy Russell, cattle stole more steers than all the rest. Who put him in the calaboose? The man with the star on his chest. Cactus Charlie cracked the safe of every bank out in the West. Who put him where he can't get loose? The man with the star on his chest. Oh, Sugar Crisp is one or two. The reward is some mighty fine eating. It's a roundup of honey coated goodness. Oh, you just can't beat it. There are three ways to eat it. As a cereal, it's dandy, what a two fisted treat. There's no sugar to be added. You just pour on the milk and eat. As a snack, it's oh so handy anywhere, anytime. So good that Bronco Bill's decided eating is better than crime. And then you can eat it like candy. Just reach in the bag and start it eating. So good that Cactus Charlie is a saying. You know I got a feeling this is better than stealing. Bronco Billy through with Rust and Charlie's Robin days are past. They decided crime can never pay, they're going straight at last. And they owe it all to the man with the star on his chest. And Sugar Crisp, Sugar Crisp. Look for the package with the three bears on it and get Sugar Crisp, one of the newest members of the Post family of cereals. Now, Rangers, as the zero hour for bombarding Comet X approaches... Stop it, Ritter, Captain. Normal. Port? Normal. Well, that's just about it, Captain. We're ready for the job ahead of us. Good. I'll contact the Excalibur, then, in order to return to planet Earth. Ranger, there's uh, still time to get aboard the Excalibur. I know, sir. I think... Well, I'm sure I could handle the nuclear cannon alone. I'm sure you could, too, Captain. Well, then. Excuse me, sir, but aren't you wasting valuable time? Yes, you're right. Captain Video to the Excalibur. Captain Video to the Excalibur. Come in, please. Come in. Excalibur? Ensign Tubbs speaking, Captain. Well, look, here are your orders, Tubbs. The Ranger and I are going to start for Comet X. You can ask him to take the Excalibur and start for planet Earth. When you arrive, Fraser, McGovern, and Cromwell are to be handed over to the Ranger police. You and Bascom know the charges against them. See that they're recorded for the court-martial. Aye, aye, sir. 
Now, hear this and remember it. Say that I recommend clemency for both Cromwell and McGovern. As for Lieutenant Frazier, I'm afraid his record must speak for itself. That's all, Tubbs. Safe voyage home and cosmic luck to you. Good luck to you, sir. All set, Ranger? I'll set, Captain. Then turn ship full speed ahead for Comet X. Please to carry here, Rogers. No, no word yet from Captain Video? Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner. Still no contact with him. Well, that puts it squarely up to me. I've got to decide one way or the other. You mean about Pluto's synthesis satellite, sir? Yes. Professor Royal can't be sure whether the Comet X is heading for those man-made satellites of Pluto or not. The safe thing would be to evacuate every one of those synthesis satellites. But I'm afraid that will raise Mary Hobb with Pluto. Well, sir, I... Well, I've got to decide one way or the other. So stand by, Rogers, will you? I will probably want you to contact Pluto Relay Station. Over and out. Over and out, sir. Oh, hi there, Rangers. Well, that sort of leaves things on the fence so far as Pluto's man-made satellites are concerned. But there's not, not, nothing much we can do about it, Rangers. Uh, at least not until we hear from Commissioner Carey. So in the meantime, what do you say we go ahead and beam in Captain Video's Western agents? Rangers, you'll recall the last report that agents Maynard, Gibson, and Steele rounded up that gang of gold thieves, and, well, they did a pretty good job, Rangers. I've already sent along congratulations and best regards from them to you. So what do you say we beam in another good team of Captain Video's agents now, Agent Sandy Hopkins and Nevada Jack McKenzie? These agents also are California agents, Rangers. So stand by once again for California. Mark this record, file number BAS2154. Come in, please. Sharp focus. Hello, Sandy. You're late. Oh, fiddlestick. Not over a minute or two. <laughs> A man could die in less time. But I never thought of it that way before, Nevada. The reason I sent for you is because there's murder in the wind. Yes, your message said an old friend of yours was in trouble. Yes. Senor Gonzalez, a grandee, lives over by the border. Seems like he's been receiving a lot of threatening letters demanding the family jewels that he's had in his possession all his life. Is that all? You got your nerve asking a man to ride a hundred miles to do a boy's work. It might have been a joke of some local kid. Yeah, it sure is mine. But I recollect once that you got mixed up with a kid, uh, by the name of Billy the Kid. Yeah, he was a kid, all right, but he was tough. He shot a man once on a two-dollar bet just to see which way he'd fall. Well, from what I understand, this district in here is full of varmints that'll make Billy the Kid look like a choir boy. <laughs> Well, come on, let's get it over with. We've got to wait here for the local sheriff. He's got the load down, but he's been working on it. Well, this is a good place to rest our horses. Well, we might as well get inside. You know, this night air is not so good for your rheumatism. <laughs> you need my strained muscles from pulling you out of tight places. <laughs> Back. Mm -hmm. There's no evidence of blood around here. 
a dead mortal cage that he was killed on the trail. Yeah, probably dumped here as a warning to keep us away. Yeah, but it's going to work out a little different than they expect. Come on, let's get started. You go out the end and see what happened. I'm riding into town. Yeah, it looks like we'll have to move fast. Rangers, looks as though Agents McKenzie and Hopkins are going to have to get to that hacienda and get there mighty fast. And when they do hello, get there... Hello, Rogers, hello. Oh, excuse me, Rangers. Rogers here, sir. This is Commissioner Carey. My yes. main, mind's made up, Rogers. We can't take any chances with all those lives on Pluto since the satellites. Put me in touch with Ranger Mason Hadley, Pluto Relay Station number one. Ranger Mason Hadley, Pluto uh, Relay Station number one. We'll go, sir. We'll go. Rangers aboard the Excalibur, where Lieutenant Cromwell and Corporal McGovern prepare to give their lives to save Captain Video and the Video Ranger. Yes, and I don't like this at all, at all. The galaxy's turning. She's heading for Comet X. Don't worry, we'll get there ahead of them. Would you listen to the man now? How can we be getting there ahead of them when they start first? Video's no fool. He knows this will probably mean his death, but he isn't going to throw his life away. This doesn't in the least answer me question, me boy. Oh. What I mean is, he'll move in slowly, cautiously, getting as close as he can safely before firing his first atom blast. Oh, now I see which way the wind blows. While the good captain moves in slow, we'll be going in fast. <laughs> McGovern, it'll be a pity to waste such a fine intellect as yours. There's still time for you to get aboard that jeep. Forrest, if I did that, how would you get along with that weak intellect of yours? <laughs> It is too late for that now. There goes the jeep. Good. And if you're ready, McGovern. Yeah, by the sword of Brian Brew, I'll never be readier than I am right now. We're turning ship then and heading for Comet X. Aye, lad. Comet X. Our last, our final mission. <laughs> While aboard the Great Ranger Rocket Galaxy, a monstrous bullet-like object heading for a flaming target. Galaxy on space lane QXL2 to communication center. Come in, Rogers. Come in, please. Come in. Sorry, Captain. It's no use. It's too bad. Want me to contact Pluto Relay Station number one? I don't think there's much point to that, Ranger. Trying that for some two hours without any luck, huh? Well, it's Comet X's force blast, Ranger. Throw on the forward braking rocket. Forward oh, braking rocket to this, sir. All right, reduce the thrust of the rear rocket, sir. Aye, aye, sir. All right, steady as she goes. There. All right, we'll move in slowly now, Ranger. We'll get in as close as we can without melting the galaxy's skin. Our own, for that matter, we can help it. 
Is there any... Before we start blasting away. Sir, is there any point in moving in slower? Well, Ranger, I'm not exactly tired of living yet. I hope we can go on living for a little longer if we can manage it. But when that explosion comes, and we hope it does, it'll ravage everything around for millions of space miles, including us. Well, we can't be sure of that, Ranger. We don't know exactly what is going to happen. But we do know that if we get too close to Comet X, the intense heat will melt us into nothing but a blob of metal. What now? Looks like Comet X is acting up again. Take a look in the electronoscope, Ranger. Aye, aye, sir. Careful, though. One of those solenoids down there. Uh, great Ganymede, Captain. The glare is so great that I can't see what's going on, but something is going on. Let me look. Like another envelope of gas is peeling off the head of Comet X. Well, it can't be that, Ranger. Hard to tell what it is. You're right, the flashing light is blinding out. Oh, no! What is it, sir? What is it? Ranger, Comet X is splitting two. What? Yes, it's splitting half. Unless I'm sadly mistaken, one of those halves is heading straight for us. Oh, Rangers, things are getting kind of rough up there with Captain Video. Now, isn't it nice to be down here all nice and peaceful? With a package of post sugar crisp on hand. Say, I hope you have this red, white, and blue package handy right now in your house. Because believe me, I can't think of a tastier cereal than post sugar crisp, morning, noon, or night, and all times in between. As a cereal, all you do is just pour on milk or cream. No sugar needed. You see, each little puff of sugar crisp is coated with candy. And that makes some cereal or snack. And you know what else? You can eat sugar crisp like candy, right out of the package. That candy coating makes it so delicious. And it gives you quick energy, too, whenever you need it. You better remember to take a package with you when you go out to play. That candy coating is satisfying. Yes, sir. You better get a package or two at your grocer's first thing tomorrow. This red, white, and blue package, and either the regular or giant size, with the three bears on it. It's one of the famous triple wrap post cereals. The first and only cereals ever guaranteed fresh. As far off in the vastness of space, Captain Video sees Comet X break in two in Commissioner Carey's office on Earth. Mr. Carey here. Rogers here, Commissioner. Oh, thank goodness, Rogers. I was afraid it might be that mechanical secretary of mine. Oh, sir, I've got Ranger Hadley of Relay Station Number 1 for you now. Good. Put him right through. Ranger Hadley here. Hello, uh, Commissioner Carey. Hello, Hadley. I've got some bad news for you. Well, I've already had the news from Ranger Rogers, sir. It couldn't be worse. I agree. What do you think ought to be done? Hadley, you've got to evacuate every man on those synth satellites of yours. Well, Commissioner, that, that's impossible. What do you mean it's impossible? Well, if what Rogers told me is correct, if we have less than 24 hours left before Comet X reaches us, well, we simply can't evacuate 72 synth satellites in that time. Suffering sunspots. Oh, if, if you'd warned us earlier... We didn't know any earlier. Well, look here, Hadley, do the, best you, do the best you can. We'll hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Now, keep me posted. We'll go, sir. We only knew. We only knew for sure. We could only contact Captain Video somehow and learn that comet's actual trajectory. Meanwhile, in the Excalibur's Jeep. Gosh, I wish I were back aboard the Galaxy. I'm not a hero, but, well, I kind of like to be near the captain when, when the zero hour comes. Yeah, I know how you feel, Tucky, but it's... Well, it's like the captain said, there's no sense in risking lives unnecessarily. Yeah, but suppose the Ranger and the captain don't come through all right. Suppose that this is the end once and for all. Oh, maybe that won't be it at all, Cubby. Maybe, well, there's always a chance. Not this time, there isn't. What makes you so sure? Oh, I'm sure that isn't what Bascom asked you, Frazier. Why are you so sure the captain won't get through? You'll find out soon enough. Find out right now, Buster. What have you been up to this time? Come on, Fraser. Tell us right now before I beat it out of you right now and here. Okay, wise guy. There's nothing you can do about it now, anyway. 
Now, when I was installing that gyro on the galaxy, it took your eyes off me for a few seconds. The rocket felt that concussion caused by the explosion from Comet X. Go on. Well, you weren't expecting that concussion, but I was. During the time you weren't looking, I reversed the galaxy's electronic reactors. You reversed the... Yeah. Ah, it's very often done when you're checking over a rocket. <laughs> but when it is, you always pull a safety switch. That's so that nobody will run the risk of being electrocuted. But I didn't bother to throw that safety switch. Oh. Those nuclear cannons, when they, when they start firing on Comet X... Whoever fires the cannon will be electrocuted the moment he fires it. I'll blast you face, no Bascom. No, no, it, it's too late for that. We haven't got time. You, you've got the contact captain video, but it isn't too late already. Ah, you fools. Do you think I would have told you if there was any chance at all of reaching video from here? We've got to reach him. Bascom, you must. Well, you can. The Jeep's microwave isn't strong enough to reach the galaxy from here. We're too far away. Try, Bascom. Try. Well, don't worry, Tommy. Try. I've got just one thing to tell you. If I don't contact Captain Video, if, if we don't save him, then there's nothing in this universe that'll save you from me. Hello? Bascom calling Captain Video aboard the galaxy. Bascom calling Captain Video aboard the galaxy. Do, do you read me, sir? Please, do you read me? Bascom calling Captain Video aboard the galaxy. Bascom calling Captain Video aboard the galaxy. Do you read me? Do you read me? Things couldn't be worse for Captain Video and the Ranger. One half of Comet X hurtling toward them in space, yet they'll be in a worse spot if they start to use the nuclear cannon. Yes, there are thrills ahead, Rangers, so be sure to watch us next time. And remember, to take excitement and action, Video Rangers need a swell-tasting breakfast. If Captain Video were here now... Now, Rangers, a word for your parents. Every American child has the right to an education. American children are very fortunate in this respect because this condition is far from worldwide. In some countries, there is no public school system. In other countries, the school system is ineffectual. So you can be proud and thankful that learning is considered a basic right in the United States. But having a complete and well set up educational system is a responsibility too. They're your schools and only as good as you make them. Captain Video was played by Al Hodge. The Video Ranger by Don Hastings. And Commissioner Carey by Ben Lackland. Midshipman Bascom was played by Wright King. Lieutenant Cromwell by David Lewis. Lieutenant Fraser by Richard Kent. Ensign Tubbs by Sam Weston. And McGovern by Cliff Dunstan. Captain Video is written by George Lothar. Your announcer is Fred Scott.